So development of e-content is important and the steps which are supposed to be performed after development of e-content is also equally important. So <clears throat> right now, the session which we are going to have is on evaluation of e-content. We need to check what is the quality of the content which we have developed, whether it is up to the mark or not. If it is up to the mark, then only all the information, all the information about tools is useful. If it is not up to the mark, then all our hard work may not be, may not prove beneficial for the students. So that's why I was, that's why I started with that this session is going to be very useful for you because till now you have learned how to develop various types of e-content and now in this session you are going to learn that how we can evaluate e-content. What are the steps? What is the format? What all needs to be checked? What are the parameters need to be considered for checking e-content? All that has to be taken care of. That is going to be taken up by the the one, the person who is behind this SRG workshop. So first of all, I would like to ask uh, Indu ma'am, are you here? Yeah, thank you, uh, Nidhi, thank you very much. And uh, yes, I'm meeting you after three days, all the participants, so I'm welcoming you today, you all today. So, although in my absence, uh, Nidhi and Priyakshi, uh, along with Monita, were taking care of this workshop, this training program very well, and I'm really happy that they could do it. I was deputed somewhere else, so I couldn't meet you on the uh, occasion of inaugural, but I will be listening to uh, all the, uh, the plans, uh, state plans that you will be developing and presenting at the end of this workshop on the day of valedictory and I, uh, I i was constantly getting feedback from uh, the coordinators nidhi and priyakshi that workshop is going well and participants are taking interest in the uh, uh, the, 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 the course that is going on uh, during the time of this workshop so i'm really happy the way the workshop was carried in my absence and also the kind of enthusiasm which was shown by the participants of this workshop. So I welcome you once again. And uh, so as uh, Nidhi has already mentioned the topic of today's workshop, today's um, session, uh, this is about evaluation of e-content. So not uh, taking much time, let us now start the uh, session for today and I, I had to take three sessions on uh, the uh, day one but uh, my faculty very efficiently took over my session which were on um, ICT initiatives then a script to screen and uh, one was on various forms of e-content so that is how my faculty is trained so I was confident that in my absence also uh, they will take care of the workshop. And this time, Professor Behra was also not available, but still uh, uh, they need big round of applause for uh, conducting this uh, program independently uh, without uh, our presence for uh, three days, actually. So thank you, Dr. Nithi and Priyakshi uh, and Dr. Monica also. So. Uh, Dr. Prachi will be uh, projecting her screen to, uh, uh, to, to project the presentation. So let us now start with the presentation, evaluation of uh, e-content. So, my presentation is already visible.
uh, yeah, can we go on to the next slide? So uh, first of all, we must learn uh, what uh, uh, is the need of e-content evaluation, why we should evaluate e-content. So we have to focus on these three aspects. What do we understand by e-contents which need to be evaluated? You already know in the first presentation, which was made by Dr. Prachi, you might have learned about various forms of e-content, but we will again reiterate it. Uh, why these e-contents needs to be evaluated, then how they should be evaluated, what, why, and how part of it. So let us now move on to what, what need to be evaluated. So these are in the next slide, uh, and move on to the next slide, please. So these are various forms of e-contents as can be seen from the slide above, you can see uh, visual, uh, there are visual e-content in which images and graphics come, then audio, text, video, rich internet applications, simulations, animations, uh, then games, interactives, e-journals, e-books, databases, presentations, immersive contents, this may augmented reality and virtual reality contents, and energized textbooks. So these are various forms of e-content. And whatever e-content we plan to use or plan to put on the portals that we have, repositories that we have, they need to be thoroughly evaluated so that uh, there are no misconceptions generated from the uh, type of e-contents that we are using. And also they should be uh, visually appealing and uh, there, there shouldn't be any uh, error in the uh, concept. They should not generate any misconceptions. Next slide. Yeah, so here you can see why e-contents need to be evaluated. So these e-contents need to be evaluated uh, for the assessment of uh, these four aspects reliability and validity. Whatever content we uh, are going to use uh, or we are going to uh, evaluate to be put on any repositories, they should be reliable and valid. If we are also hosting them on any device, like there are smart boards, which comes with preloaded contents, sometimes uh, these contents have errors in them but they come with the device and teachers think that they are uh, these uh, contents are perfect and they use them as it is but those content we don't know which is the team which was involved in the creation of those content so we need to judge the reliability and validity of those content also we come preloaded with the devices that we are using and other contents also needs to be evaluated which we curate from somewhere which we create also need to be evaluated and which we pull from uh, the content partners we are working with so any e-content on earth which we are going to use need to be evaluated for the reliability and validity so this is uh, i i will put one example which i always uh, put because that I really witnessed. So there was a content on a device, a smart board we are all aware of. So this, these devices uh, come with preloaded contents. So there was a content to teach the concept of circle, but the e-content which was housed there on the device was not circle, it was actually sphere. It was very attractive to look at, very glossy, and it was moving in a very uh, attractive fashion, but it wasn't actually circle, it was a sphere. So such e-content, though they are glossy to look at, they are attractive to look at, but they generate misconceptions among young learners, they think uh, they, they, they will feel that circle and square are uh, synonyms and they are they can be equated with each other. 
uh, which is not the case when we are teaching uh, our children mathematics. So in mathematics, a sphere is something different and circle is uh, different. So there is a difference between the two. So that means that content, e-content, which was a sphere, was not reliable and valid to teach the concept of a circle. So then another aspect is appropriateness as per the nature of content, methods of teaching, context of the learner and available technologies. So the content which we are going to evaluate need to be evaluated on these four parameters also. Uh, we uh, need to understand the nature of content which the e-content is, uh, is meant for. Like when we teach any subject, we come across four types of e-contents, uh, which are uh, factual content, which deals with facts like uh, the uh, different states and union territories of India and their capital. So these are facts. So a digital map depicting uh, different uh, states and union territories with marked uh, capitals, their marked capitals, indicated capitals can uh, very well establish visually in the mind of children that how the uh, different states and UTs are placed on a map of India and what are the capitals. Because when we put something visual instead of just memorizing different names of states uh, and union territories and their capitals. Instead, if we um, just make it more uh, visually appealing for the children, we can place a map of India and then we can uh, uh, teach them uh, about these facts, uh, which uh, is about the names and capitals of different states and uh, territories. So, uh, this is one example of factual contents. There are many. When you teach your subject, you can very well uh, demarcate that which content is factual content. Then there are contents which are uh, factual plus conceptual, where there are some concrete concepts are hidden, like earth is spherical. The example I gave of circle and sphere are also concept. Circle is one concept, sphere is another concept. And then earth is spherical. It is a concept. So such a content need uh, some specific types of uh, e-contents to, to, to be given. If we are drawing earth on the blackboard, it will not provide a child a 3D visualization of the um, whole concept. Then uh, what we uh, see with our eyes is entirely different. We don't see earth as a, a sphere, we see it as flat. So such concepts needs a 3D visualization. So wherever 3D visualization is required, we need to, uh, pick and choose the content which is giving an exposure and experience of 3D. Like uh, th th there are some other uh, abstract concepts like the uh, extension of this universe, solar system, galaxies and stars in the sky. So all these uh, concepts are very abstract because we cannot really show them to our children. So here, some kind of simulation or 3D visualization is required. If uh, you have visited uh, the planetoriums, so it is simulation of the part of universe, not the entire universe, but part of universe. So you can see uh, in the planetoriums how uh, different celestial bodies are, um, are, are, are exist in the universe. So, uh, so that is how the uh, second nature of content is uh, conceptual. 
after that uh, the third category of content third uh, type of content we deal with is uh, procedural content where we need to teach certain processes procedures for example land form formation land form formation is a process which takes place in centuries but how can we expect a child to understand different land form formation uh, to understand in a 45 minutes period how uh, waterfalls are um, formed how a plateau is formed how a mountain range is formed so uh, so these are uh, also um, conceptual content but there is a process also involved and in especially in the land form formation it takes centuries for land form formations to uh, take uh, the, the present shape they are in and maybe in future they won't be in the form that uh, they exist today so all these concepts also need a 3d visualization where we can understand how landforms are formed. So uh, uh, Dr. Prachi, can we show them a diagram on, uh, or maybe later we can show them examples of each category of content, factual, procedural, then uh, conceptual, and then again, metacognitive. So I will show you one example of each of these uh, types of content. So they're, 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 the procedural contents are there in science also, how the uh, process of photosynthesis takes place is also a process. So in our O labs, you can very well see the process of photosynthesis and other such concepts. And in a similar manner, we also teach our students, there are concepts like uh, how digestion in human body takes place, how respiration happens. So we cannot actually see them, show our child um, how res uh, what is the respiratory system, the actual respiratory uh, organs to our children. We can uh, draw a diagram or we can show some kind of a model, but here also to show the process of simulation, the, uh, the process of digestion, respiration, and other such functions in our body, uh, the processes in our body, we can show them the um, relevant digital content. So I will be showing you example of this uh, procedural content also, procedural digital content also. Then, and maybe uh, Dr. Prachi might have shown them in the first presentation, but we will again see them from this perspective, how uh, what type of e-content is uh, suitable for procedural content, uh, factual content, and um, the conceptual content. Then uh, the fourth uh, type of content is uh, metacognitive content, which need to be understood at the level of our emotions. So like uh, the contents related to value education and other such contents are metacognitive content, which need to be understood at the level of our emotions so that we believe in uh, what we uh, are preached by our elders and by our, our teachers. So visual medium is very, uh, very useful and impactful uh, way of uh, teaching the uh, metacognitive aspects of uh, any learning. So, uh, so this was about nature of content. So we need to evaluate them as per the nature of content. If the content is factual, whether we are using the right kind of content, e-content. If the content is uh, conceptual, whether we are using the right kind of content for uh, clarifying the concept. If the content is procedural, whether we are using right kind of e-content to establish the uh, understanding of those particular processes. And if the content is metacognitive, are we using the right kind of content? So we need to evaluate it from that perspective also. Then uh, methods of uh, teaching learning. Here the teacher need to select a particular content as per his or her way or methods of teaching learning uh, process. 
children have different ways of learning. We have uh, learned that there are learners. We can categorize the learner on the basis of the way they learn. There are learners who are uh, auditory learners, visual learners, kinesthetics learners, and uh, the mm. learners who learn best by combining all the uh, senses. Mm. So like that, teachers uh, also have their own way of teaching and explaining a particular concept. Mm. Some teacher may find a mind map to, uh, to uh, unfold their uh, teaching plan. And some might feel comfortable by using chalk and board, by using a chart, by using a diagram, or by wow. using a PowerPoint presentation. It depends on the teacher, how the teacher is comfortable to teach a particular type of concept. So we have to reflect on our way of uh, teaching also, what, what, what method suits us. And accordingly, we have to pick up e-content and then we uh, embed it in our teaching learning program. Then context of learner is also very important. While uh, selecting or choosing a particular kind of e-content, we need to evaluate the context of the learner. If we are teaching waterfall formation in a place, geographical location, where there are already a lot of waterfalls are there which children see on day-to-day -day basis. So it is not required to show them a digital content on the blackboard because they every day see the uh, waterfall. We just try to make them recall and then maybe with the help of a simple diagram, not with the help of an animation, or maybe we can also use animation. We can teach them the concept, how waterfalls are formed. But other things they can see, the real waterfall they can see in their surroundings. But if we are teaching a, a student in a location, in a context where there are no waterfalls. So it will be difficult for the child to comprehend what uh, waterfalls are like. So then we need to show them a small clipping, video clipping of the waterfall. We can also show them uh, the uh, picture uh, of the waterfall so that they understand the, because that is abstract for them. Uh, and in the another context where children see waterfall on day to day basis, the concept of waterfall is not abstract like that. If we are teaching uh, uh, the agricultural practices, if we teach agricultural practices which are practiced in a Western Uttar Pradesh to a child who lives in the context of Northeastern areas state so they won't, won't relate to the those kind of agricultural practices because they see jhum cultivation a child who resides in a um, uh, in a location where there uh, which is hilly so there is practiced an entirely different types of agricultural practices so uh, one type cannot fit all the learners. We need to understand the context of the learner, not in terms of the geographical location uh, a child is living in, but also we need to see uh, the kind of digital infrastructure that exists. So if uh, we have chosen something which, uh, which uh, for which we don't have an actual uh, infrastructure in terms of having digital devices and other aspects. So maybe that choosing that content will not be suitable for us. So we also need to evaluate the context of the learner. And then yeah, available technology is also uh, similar to that because uh, yeah, it also relates to the context of the learner. What is the available technology that we have? If we have smart devices, a teacher has one smart device and children doesn't have any. So the content which was shown, uh, the, like augmented reality content, where there, the, the, the 3D visualization of uh, 
volcano appeared. So teacher can use that. If a teacher has a small, a small device and a projector and internet, so she can improvise further the learning plan. So uh, if she has only one device, then maybe she can form groups of children and show this particular content. And if there is a projector also and internet connectivity also, so maybe she can show it to the entire class uh, together. So we need to see the available technology also. Then we need to select the uh, digital content as per the available technology. So apart from this, uh, the e-content which we choose need to be cost effective also. We need to see what is the weightage of a particular content in the syllabus. And if we can uh, teach that concept by some alternative way, then choosing any costly technology, then we need to check that also. Then we also need to see the licensing. If we are curating the content, we are picking it from somewhere. So we need to see that content should not be licensed. Otherwise, we are Mm, uh, we, we are uh, deviating from the intellectual property rights. We are using somebody else's content, which uh, we are not allowed to use. So we can see the licensing also. If we acknowledge from where we have picked this content, we acknowledge the creator, then maybe we can use the content in the uh, class by acknowledging the creator of the content. Uh, next, please. So uh, the, this is the uh, quality parameters for e-content evaluation. So we need to see who our audience are, target audience are, what is the content, then pedagogical considerations. Uh, we are summing up the previous slide only. Iske uh, baad hai next, same slide, please go on to the previous slide. Presentation format, what is the presentation format? Uh, the technical features of the content and administrative considerations. Next, please. So how it should be evaluated? Let us now understand the process of evaluation of the content, maybe at the end of uh, the presentation, and, or, or shall we show, uh, let us to break the monotony because you are uh, maybe you are listening from the morning, but you had hands on also in the breakout rooms. So let me show you four different types of digital contents, uh, which are uh, factual, conceptual, procedural, and metacognitive. So uh, can we see uh, the content? Uh, yes, what are the contents which we have? Can you show me? No, it's metacognitive. The presentation was the digestive and respiratory system, procedural. Conceptual ke liye acidity bhi dikha sakte hain. Just wait for a moment. We will show it right now. Though you might have seen it, but now you uh, see it from the different perspective, from the perspective of a content which is procedural. Uh, 
uh, so here you can see the process of digestion how food moves uh, in a small intestine big intestine and then uh, it gets digested by the mm, enzymes and then it is extracted from the body So here in the caption, you can also see this is a screencast video. Here you can see digestive system, respiratory, heart, reproductive and urinary process, then brain. So everything is shown here. So the process can be shown uh, by 3D visualization. Then maybe volcano we can see again. This is example of a simulation, but it can also be used to showcase a process which relates to a type of landform. Because not in everybody's surroundings, a uh, volcano exists. But we read or study this concept, which is abstract for the majority. Sounds like a share with Yasha. we can show them the uh, birds and animals for a video. So uh, they, these are photographs of birds and animals. So we did a little research and added them some facts related to these uh, birds and animals. So these small, small videos are vid videos or photographs uh, alongside some uh, researched uh, facts about them are very interesting to teach the uh, factual content. So here you can see this is a bird you can play and the facts about it. So these are the facts about it. What is the uh, scientific name of the bird and alternative name, then the habitat. And if a bird or animal has some migratory habits, we can also, uh, we can also, uh, depict it the in the digital content that we are using so these are all facts but can be made interesting by uh, adding photographs or adding some other kind of digital contents so next please because they have already seen it uh, 
हाँ फैक्चुअल हमने बता दिया प्रोसीजरल बता दिया या ये एसिडिटी फॉर कॉन्सेप्टुअल के लिए so uh, here is the concept of epithelial cell acidity and how epithelial cell protect our stomach from the acid which is formed in our stomach it's shown uh, with the help of an interesting uh, comic strip so that is how we can pick and choose content to discuss a concept a procedure or a fact so let us now uh, see example of a uh, metacognitive content uh, it is an egyptian uh, short movie which has won a uh, oscar award in the category of short uh, film so let us now watch that the uh, title of the film is the other pair <laughs>
तो दिस मूवी इज ऑफ फोर मिनट्स एंड फोर सेकेंड और फोर थर्टी टू सेकेंड ड्यूरेशन एंड इफ यू हैव नोटिस्ड देर वॉज नो डायलॉग्स इन दी फिल्म ओनली टू प्रेजेज वर यूज कम फास्ट दी ट्रेन हैज अराइव्ड this phrase was spoken twice by the father of the child there was no other dialogues but with the correct sound and music and with the uh, appropriate expression spatial expressions and gestures uh, this uh, short movie speaks volumes and can you teach uh, what is taught in 4 minutes and a few seconds in words i think no amount of words can uh, uh, just touch the feelings which are expressed in this movie which has no dialogues so uh, this is an example of meta cognitive content and that is the power of digital medium also so we have to choose right kind of content to re- to teach a right uh, type of content we have to just evaluate on do content analysis to understand the nature of content and then we can choose the right uh, type of content which in a limited time can express volumes about a particular thing so digital technologies or digital content they doesn't uh, just waste time of the teacher they are they they they, they are actually um, very economic in terms of the time we spent to teach a particular context and the understanding is also better when we use them but we need to evaluate the content analyze the content and then we need to pick and choose the right kind of content so evaluation is done at the level of content also we need to evaluate the type of content that which we are going to teach and also type of digital content which is more suitable for teaching the particular content apart from that we need to judge the reliability and validity of the content as per the methodology of the uh, to be adopted and as per the context of the learner uh this particular meta cognitive content they are uh, suitable in every context though this is an egyptian film but it will communicate equally to all which to any linguistic group to any uh, person who is uh, residing in any geographical location so such contents are to be understood at the level of heart they are related to the kind of value system which we need to inculcate in our children so uh, and they are uh, they 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 are economic in terms of time spent in preaching our children no values so values are not preached but they are imbibed uh, so let us now uh, move on to the uh, presentation again so there are e content evaluation tool whenever you plan to uh, create a e content curate a e content or you want to use a e content in uh, for your teaching learning then you need to uh, just evaluate it in the parameters which uh, uh, we will access from the next slide from the li- link of next slide uh, so here you can see the uh, parameters the tool e content evaluation tool this tool is placed on our website you can download it from here and whenever you are uh, procuring any content you can use this tool to evaluate it if you are creating e content then also after creation you need to evaluate it on the parameters given over here and if you uh, yeah follow the e content development guidelines developed by cit and crt then also you can uh, uh you then also you can uh, create content in a manner which meets all the uh, parameters because uh, 
there are guidelines for e-content development for school and teacher education and also for uh, uh, and also for children with special needs there are two sets of guidelines let us first see the e-content evaluation tools then we will see the e-content development guidelines so it uh, is opening वहां से ले सकते हैं या वेबसाइट से सो वी विल जस्ट प्रोजेक्ट सी आई टीज वेबसाइट एंड वी विल ऑल्सो शो यू वेर टू गेट दीज ई कॉन्टेंट ई कॉन्टेंट इवेल्युएशन टूल्स so this is cit's website cit.nic.in is the url and you can see here e content evaluation tools so uh, these are the parameters of e content evaluation so let us now see the parameters factual accuracy we need to judge the factual accuracy of the content the example i gave about uh, sphere and uh, circle so the 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 content which was shown on the smart board was not factually correct factually accurate uh, the website ka url uh, prachi can you please uh, just uh, write the url of the website paste the url of the website in the chat because someone is asking uh, about the website then legal use of proprietary content if we have used the proprietary content following some legal uh, rules uh, meant for it like acknowledging the creator or acknowledging the user there is also such provision that if we want to use any content from a movie from a video a 30 second uh, ka content we can take free but if we use more than 30% we have to uh, check the copyright which uh, that content actually had then a uh, content piece free from technical glitch if the content piece is free from technical glitch then constitutional and statutory appropriateness of the content we also need to see the constitutional and statutory appropriateness so uh, and we can we move up only can we see 1 to 4 project 1 to 4 so when you are evaluating any content if there is no in any of these four you need not to uh, further evaluate the content on other six parameters so there are 10 parameters if any among these four comes no so we have to reject that content because we cannot compromise on the factual accuracy we cannot compromise on legal use of proprietary content we cannot compromise on technical glitches and we cannot compromise if anything goes against our constitutional values which are enshrined in our uh, in our uh, uh, in, in our constitution so then uh, uh, let us see another six parameters corresponds with topics subtopics and learning outcomes covered in the textbook subject area so we need to see and we now we have to rate it uh, on a five point rating scale one being the highest and five being the lowest we can go other way round also we can keep five as highest and one as lowest it is up to us on how we uh, use this rating scale then pedagogic and uh, andragogic structure if the content is pedagogically or andragogically structured if the content is meant for young children it need to be pedagogically suitable structured and if it, it is for adult learner it should be andragogically structured 
pedagogy is the science of teaching young children and andragogy is the science of teaching adult learners. So we cannot teach adults in a way we teach uh, young children. So we have to take care of the its age appropriateness also. Then seven parameter is language and comprehensibility. If the language is simple and comprehensible, then format of content presentation appropriate for age, class, and label. The format which we have used, whether it is a panel discussion, video lecture, animation. So these are various formats of e-contents, images. So we need to check whether it is suitable for the age class and level of the child. Then pace of the program. The pace of the program also we need to see. A program should not be very dense in, uh, in, in combining the content. It should also be age appropriate, uh, the pacing of the program. It should not be very fast. In five minutes, we should not load it with a lot of difficult content. And it should not be a, a very easy content cannot be uh, spread over half an hour or one hour. So we have to keep a right pace also of the program. Then duration of the program appropriate for the age class levels. For young children, we advise development of bite-sized videos, videos which are uh, from 30 seconds uh, to uh, four or five minutes duration or bite-side videos because the attention span of the children uh, is very, very, uh, uh, this, uh, it, it is not very favorable when it comes to young child. The attention span also differs because we are not talking about any uh, content which is there for entertainment. We are talking about uh, educational content. If we show children uh, cartoons, which are uh, based randomly on uh, different uh, areas of life, they can spend watching hours to those uh, cartoons. But when it comes to understanding concept, so we know, need to give them in small, small chunks so that they comprehend the uh, content and also uh, and, and also uh, get the learning outcomes also out of it. They uh, understand the learning outcome. They learn the learning outcome. They demonstrate the learning outcome. So that can be ensured. So uh, the, the, here is a, the note also given how to use this e-content development tool. Parameter one to four to be responded as yes or no. Parameter 5 to 10 should be rated as per the uh, 1, 1 to 5 uh, rating scale. 1 excellent, 2 very good, 3 good, 4 poor, 5 very poor. And then the name of the reviewer, designation, mobile number, email ID. And I would also like to announce here that after the completion of this uh, training, five-day training, you all will be listed uh, in uh, uh, listed among our e-content evaluators. You will become e-content evaluators for NCRT. We will add your name, uh, and uh, I uh, I would like to uh, yeah also uh, take it into notice. I would request Dr. Nidhi and Priyakshi to take it into consideration so that. The names of all these participants are added in our e-content evaluation team. And yeah. we also, um, we might be knowing their subject areas also because they were divided in breakout rooms uh, as per their subjects. So uh, a subject wise list uh, need to be made and they need to be uh, added in the e-content evaluators team. And whenever we are evaluating content, we are conducting workshops. So these people will be invited for e-content evaluation. So you will become now our e-content evaluators. If you have any doubt any e-content evaluation tool, you already understood. And these are available whenever you will be uh, invited for e-content evaluation, you will get these tools and evaluate the contents as per that. 
So these parameters are also elaborated in another uh, document, which is uh, also uh, placed on the website. So let us now see that also, so that you understand these parameters in uh, details also. What do we mean, mean by factual accuracy? So here you can see content uh, being uh, presented through text, diagrams, pictures, audio, animation, simulation, etc. have no factual error. So that is meant by factual accuracy. Then legal use of proprietary content. The content we should not use proprietary content which is unauthorized, okay? So uh, it is also written so when we have to mark yes or when we have to mark no. Content piece free from technical glitches. Sound should be in sync with visuals. There is general usability in terms of rendering and visual uh, experience. So it should be good. There should not be any uh, glitches there or any jerks in the uh, content being shown. Next. Constitutional and statutory appropriateness of content. Content does not reflect violation of uh, constitutional obligations, for example, adhering to fundamental rights and duties, should not promote stereotypes or derogatory depiction based on caste, class, gender, community, ethnic groups, or religion. So uh, that is what we have to see. So these are the essential things we, which we need to check. If any of these four parameters come, comes no, we have to reject that content. Now let us move on to uh, six, pedagogic uh, or andagogic structure, suggestive criteria, uh, it is not an exhaustive list, but an indicative list. Content delivery is supported by relevant examples, which are relevant for young children, if it is meant for young children, and relevant for uh, uh, adult, if the content is meant, made, meant for adults. Then content piece is uh, learning outcome oriented. It should be learning outcome oriented, then cause and effective relationship is used to explain various phenomena where, wherever applicable. And we need to adhere to the principles of easy to complex, concrete to abstract, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, let's, let's scroll it further. Then content piece attempts to initiate reflective thinking among learners. Content piece attempts to integrate with other domains of knowledge. Content piece prescribes to the following maxims of teaching and learning, easy to difficult, simple to complex, concrete to abstract, whole to parts or parts to whole. Content piece prescribes to the following maxims of teaching and learning special uh, contiguity of uh, message uh, forms, then corresponding words and pictures are presented near rather than far from each other. If it's a, it is a labeled diagram, it should be labeled properly. Then temporal contiguity to, uh, of message forms, corresponding words and pictures are presented simultaneously rather than successively so that uh, uh, the, 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 the picture is visualized uh, accordingly. Then uh, I, I would give, if we give example of the uh, content which was based on, uh, in which you saw the birds and animals. So in one sheet, the uh, slide, the picture of a bird was shown. But when in another slide, the, say, the facts about that bird was shown, the picture of that bird was also there in the window. So uh, it should correspond with picture and a word correspondent should be there. Language and comprehensibility. Content piece should have no grammatical errors. 
content is presented in a manner which is understandable as per the grade of the learner. Then format of the content presentation. Content has been presented in a format that is best suited for the theme. For instance, a content which is in the form of a group discussion would score low on, the, uh, on this uh, criteria. Uh, then if the, if the best way of explaining the concept would have been an experiment. Experiment can substitute a panel discussion. Nahi ho sakta hai. So experiment can be best explained by demonstration, demonstrating the particular uh, demonstrating the particular experiment and not by discussion or uh, just a theoretical textual content. So they can be supplemented and complemented by other forms of content, but the appropriate one should be experiment, demonstration. Then uh, pace of the program. The content is appropriate uh, uh, somebody is writing uh, that it should be scrolled again, but soon after this uh, session, uh, we will share these two documents in the group. We will share you for your use. I will scroll also, but you can also, uh, we will also share them. Pace of the program. The content is appropriately paced, leading to easy to uh, ease, ease of comprehension. Then duration of the program. The content is of appropriate duration to sustain attention of the learner. I already gave example. For young children, we need to have smaller videos or smaller content piece which are visually rich and attractive to look at. But for the adult learners, we can, uh, we can have longer duration program. We do lectures of longer duration depending upon the uh, age and class of the students. So these are the 10 parameters. Uh, Dr. Prachi, can you scroll the, the, them from top to down once again? Because there was a respect from a request from a So let us now see e-content development guidelines. So this workshop was for e-content development. We uh, presented various uh, tools. We demonstrated various tools and uh, softwares for the development of e-content. Now let us also see e-content development guidelines. So when you uh, prepare your state plan, and decide to develop e-content, please go through these guidelines so that you uh, get to know the right way of uh, developing e-content. So, yes. So this was uh, for school and teacher education or this was for? Uh -huh. So there are another guidelines where we uh, need to also see the uh, e-content development guidelines for children with special needs.
so uh, we see that evaluation is an intrinsic component of uh, creation process so it can be seen uh, from this adi model that how evaluation is important at each stage of e content development so we need to start with analyze uh, when we analyze then are also we are evaluating i uh, mentioned uh, examples of uh, the nature of content we do content analysis so then uh, we we uh, here also we are evaluating so we start from content analysis think that what kind of content is appropriate for a particular type of content then we design during designing also we are evaluating that what kind of pictures examples uh, and tools we need to uh, have then when we develop the particular content then also we evaluate that what should be the uh, particular format or particular uh, way of or developing the content whether we want it in the form of an animation or a panel discussion or a demonstration and when we implement also then also we evaluate we field test it uh, with the actual uh, users and if we uh, see that they are comprehending the content or getting the learning outcome as was envisaged so then we uh, think that e content is appropriate field testing and before uploading it on any repository we evaluate them on the parameters which were shown uh, uh, to you once the content is found suitable from the point of reliability and validity and from the point of uh, the different parameters which were designed so we, uh, we 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 declare this content uh, a content as appropriate but once a content is uploaded on a repository then again there is uh, the process of evaluation uh, there is a provision of rating also when it comes to diksha diksha has this provision of rating so how the content is rated by the larger uh, audiences uh, is also considered so the process of evaluation never ends we are constantly evaluating the content which we create which we use which we integrate in our teaching learning plan so uh, that was all so if there are any questions we can uh, take questions uh, dr nidhi i have done with my presentation sure ma'am there so, are any questions. So all those participants who have any query, they can write their queries in the chat box or they can unmute themselves and ask directly. We have enabled you or you can unmute yourself and ask or you can write in the chat box. Since no one has um, asked any query. <coughs> uh, hello, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, as hello. you have said, uh, pedagogy should be according to the level of the learner earlier. Mm, pardon me. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Can you be a bit louder when you ask your question? Okay, ma'am. Uh, as you have uh, said that pedagogy should be according to the level of the learner, that uh, elementary section and the higher section should be taught differently, no? Huh. The e-content uh, made, created and selected for different yes. levels of learner should be uh, different because mm -hmm. pedagogy of teaching elementary children is different from the pedagogy of teaching uh, children who are studying mm -hmm. in class 9, 10, 11, 12. And for class so 6, 7, 8 yeah. also pedagogy can be differentiated. So, uh, so uh, mm -hmm. likewise the content so, needs to be selected. Yes, yes ma'am. Sorry to interrupt you for that. Uh, yes, regarding that section that uh, you already discussed about it, but uh, can you please repeat it once again that which uh, 
which should be the parameters to uh, uh, evaluate that le level of the learner that is for elementary and the higher secondary so uh, if we are uh, teaching uh, young children so a uh, bite size videos very small duration content is appropriate mm -hmm. because their attention span is not that long but if okay. we are uh, teaching uh, the, the the content is meant for the children of class uh, 9th 10th 11th 12th so mm -hmm. then we need to uh, have the format according to the age level we can also have experiments demonstration of experiments because contents are also different we need to analyze the content also content analysis also need to be done whether we are going to teach them some experiment or some theory or some concept or some facts so we have to see that see the age group of the learners and then select the appropriate uh, content so Thank then you, only it will be pedagogically structured as per the age and level of the learners thank you ma'am and also content should also not be very dense for the young le le learners uh, but it can be a bit dense for the learners of class 9 10 11 12 okay ma'am thank you ma'am thank you uh, yes sir from lakshadwe one of the participant has uh, raised hand you can unmute yourself and ask Can you repeat it once again? Uh, can you type your question? You are not properly audible. Dr. Nidhi, uh, Nidhi can you uh, get the question? Yes, ma'am. Um, so, according, all of you according, can write... to that uh, CWSN, according to uh, that uh, CWSN children, Sir, can you that please is... uh, write your question in the chat box? I'll read it for you. I am not sure. Or please repeat the question because I can't see anybody writing in the chat box. The participant who was asking that question has left or may got disconnected because I can see his name. I cannot see his name in the list. So, if there are any other questions we can take. Good evening, madam. Hello. Yes. Yes. Oh, actually, the link what is given, which is given here in the chat box, uh, the previous link and the and recent link is same, I think. Uh, it will be better if you provide the last... Have uh, we closed the session because they are talking about the links? Nidhi? No, ma'am. Actually, he's asking for e-content evaluation link. One of the participants had asked to share e-content evaluation tool link. So that we was share, we sh we will share the uh, you have shared it, it in the group already shared in the WhatsApp group uh, and chat only one, is, only one is shared I think only one you have shared there were two portal forms na ye portal ka link hai you can uh, get it from the portal and we will uh, share the standalone documents also in the WhatsApp group we will download and share it with them okay okay thank you uh, Dr Prachi please share. And download and share in the WhatsApp group. And one of the participants has asked a question. Hmm. Pedagogy up to which stage and andragogy also? Please explain. Up till 18, it's pedagogy. And after 18, it's andragogy. 
for school children it is pedagogy up till 18 we believe that a child passes class 12 uh, at the age of 18 and uh, 18 plus uh, for 18 plus we use andragogy and there is one more query there are few students whose iq level are very good can we go for depth of the content in elementary level no, because uh, there is always a normal prob probability curve when we uh, deal with a class. Uh, the most of the class, 60% of the class comes under that curve. And there are lower IQ children and higher IQ children. I will not say IQ, but those by any reason, they, 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 uh, they understand a bit slow and some who understand a bit faster. So they are slow and uh, some of the children are fast learners. So we have to plan our session in a way that it suits to 66% of the class, which is, uh, uh, which is comprised of most of the class population. But by embedding appropriate e-content, we need to make it engaging for uh, all the learners. Because if we use content which are based on the principle of universal design of learning, so the learners who are a bit slower in learning can get different stimulus and learn better by using uh, audio visual content. And the children who are uh, above average or who are gifted, uh, they, for them we have to uh, design different assignments so that it, uh, it is a bit difficult than the normal class. So we have to engage them differently in the class to keep our class disciplined. So that is how we have to handle it. But we have to consider the majority when we deliver a class, but also need to identify the slow learners and fast learners so that we also give them a adequate stimuli to be engaged with the class. Are there any other queries? So, thank you so much, ma'am. As uh, as participants have asked their queries, and uh, now they are just showing gratitude that they have uh, got the chance to have this uh, such an informative session so i would like to thank you on behalf of participants for explaining the details of how e-content can be evaluated to ensure quality of resources which we develop for making teaching learning process meaningful and interesting so thank you so much ma'am thank you nidhi and thank you all the participants for expressing their uh, their, their appreciation and also like uh, and for like liking the session and being a patient uh, listeners. Thank you very much. So see you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I would uh, like to ask one of the participants, uh, Mr. Lal Nunzira. So Mr. Lal Nunzira, uh, I just want to confirm, are you from Nagaland or from Mizoram?